Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll look at recoloring a more complex pattern in Photoshop. One of my subscribers, Muhammad Fayed, had actually asked about this and I think it's just an awesome question. So let's go and see what the answer is going to be. I'm going to choose layer, new fill layer and pattern so that I can apply a pattern to my document. This is just a simple stripe pattern that I've created. It's black and white stripes. Let's just note that black is at the very top. I'll click OK. Now, in an earlier video, and I'm going to put a link to that in the description below, I showed you how you would recolor the black stripes. But Muhammad's question was more interesting still, and he asked what the process would be for changing the white stripes as well. So let's see how that would be done because it's done differently. I'll choose layer and then new adjustment layer and I'm going to apply a gradient map adjustment layer to this document. I'll click OK. By default, a black to white gradient is being applied and that's no change to the image. You can see the black is still our topmost stripe. I'll double click this because we're going to have a look at this type of adjustment and understand what it actually is going to do. A gradient map applies a gradient to an image, but in a very interesting way. It applies this color here to the darkest areas of the image and this color here to the lightest areas of the image. And if we had gray areas or mid-tone areas in the image, then it would apply this color. So we can change this gradient around. Let's go and drag the black bit all the way over to this end and let's take the white bit back to this end. And what's happening now is that white is being mapped onto what was previously the darkest areas of the image. So this was black, it's now white. This end was the white end and we're mapping black onto it. So this stripe was white, it's now black. We can also change color this way. I'll double click on this and I'll choose a color to recolor what was the black stripe. So I'm going to recolor it to a sort of turquoise. Then this end here is what was previously the white stripe. So I'll double click it and choose a color for that. So I'm going to choose a sort of orangey color. Well, that's hurting my eyes a bit. So let's click OK. So this is the way that you can take a black and white pattern or a color and white pattern or even a pattern that has sort of lights and darks in it and recolor it. You'll add the color for the darkest areas to this end of the gradient, the colors for the lightest areas to this end of the gradient. And that's all you need to do. Well, that's all you need to do if you've got a two color starting image. What happens if you've got something that has more than two colors in it? Let's just take that gradient, drop it onto the trash can, double click this, I'm going to choose a different pattern. This is a Moroccan trellis pattern. As you can see, it's got lights, very dark areas and it's got a sort of mid-tone area. This is in the sort of mid grays. If we turn this into gray, it would probably be about the middle gray. So let's see how we would recolor this. But before I start, there is a gotcha on this one. Let's just zoom in here. You'll see that inside this part of the pattern, there is blue and then there's sort of bluey gray going into black. And along the edges here, we've got black and then gray and then white. We're going to get some sort of bleeding into these areas and it's not going to be possible to get a really good result, but we can get a result. And let's have a look and see how we do that with that gradient map tool. Layer, new adjustment layer, and then gradient map. This time you can see that the result is a little bit different because we had three colors in our original image. So black is being mapped onto black, white is being mapped onto the whiter areas of the image, but this mid gray is being mapped onto the mid tones and that was blue, it's now gray. I'll double click on this because we need to create our own gradient. So I'm gonna say, okay, with this black area, I want that to be dark blue. You can see that that's bled a little bit into the middle of the shape where it was blue previously. We're going to fix that in a minute. For the white area, I'm going to make that a sort of pale pink. Now I need to decide what I want to do with the middle area here. And I want to make it a sort of red color. So we don't have a stop for that. We're going to need to add a stop. So I'm going to just target one of these stops. So I'm in sort of stop mode, if you like. And I'm going to click in the middle here 
and there I'm going to add a stop. I'll double click it and I'm going to make it my red color. I can already see that there is that bleeding around the edges here. Let me just click OK and let me zoom in for you. You can see that we've got that red bleeding into the gray areas and the reason is that these gray areas are ending up in the middle of this gradient map. So they're being recolored to the pink color, the same pink color as the blue was being colored to. There really is no simple fix for this. The most obvious fix would be to create some sort of a mask so that you could recolor these areas in the middle that were blue to the color that you want and then recolor the rest of the document with a single gradient map so that you're sort of isolating the problem areas which are going to be these areas that are bleeding around the edge. Now if you want to see how that's going to be done I'll do that next but if you just wanted a simple way of recoloring multicolor patterns in Photoshop then this gradient map tool is the tool to use. Now to see how we would get a better result with recoloring this pattern let's just drag the gradient map out of the way for now and let's have a look at this design. What I want to do is to create a mask of this image so that I can use it to recolor the image. The problem is that I can't make any selections over this image because it is a pattern filled layer. So I'm going to need to create a layer that I can actually use. For this I'm going to hold down Control Alt Shift and press the letter E on a PC. That will create a flattened stamped version of the entire image on a separate layer. You can see it's not changing the image at all but I have a layer that I can use as a mask. On a Mac that would be Command, Option, Shift and E. So now I've got my mask layer, I can use that to do things such as make a selection. So I'm going to the magic wand tool, I'm going to set my tolerance to a sort of reasonable value. I want to grab some of these extra pixels on the inside here. So I'm thinking maybe a tolerance of 20 will be a good value. Now you'll probably find that your magic wand tool is set to point sample. I like to set mine to about a 5 by 5 average. It's not going to help in this case but it is a better option for the magic wand tool for most uses. I'm going to make sure that contiguous is not selected because I want to be able to select all the blue bits in this design. I also want to make sure that anti-alias is selected so that we'll get some feathering around the edge of our selection. With this layer targeted, the one that we created so that we could create masks, I'll just click on these shapes. All the blue shapes are now selected so whatever I do next is only going to affect those blue shapes. I'll click to close this because I don't need it any longer. I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer, just a simple hue saturation adjustment layer so that I can recolor these blue bits. Layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, click OK. If we have a look in the layers palette here you can see that there is a mask being applied so the changes that we're making here are only going to affect the selected area, the area that is in this mask. So now I can choose a color to use. So I'm going to choose my sort of red color. And that's dealt with the red part of the image. Now if I have a look in here you can say that I didn't do a really good job. I think that increasing my tolerance might have been a good idea. Let's just turn that off for a minute and see if we can do a better selection. I'll go back to my magic wand tool. I can either increase the tolerance or I could increase the actual selection. Let me show you what happens if you don't increase the tolerance but you increase the selection itself. I'm going to click to select everything and I'll go to select and then modify and I'll choose to expand my selection. Now I've got the blue bits, I'm just not eating into the black enough so I'm going to expand it by one pixel. I think that's going to be a better option. Let's go back to our hue saturation adjustment layer. Let's go back and target the mask itself. Now I want to fill these selected areas with white. White is my current foreground color. I'll press Alt Backspace. That would be Option Delete on the Mac. Now if I go in with the Zoom tool, You'll see that I've got a nice smooth selection. There's no residual blue in here because I've increased the size of my selection. I've increased my mask a little bit so that I'm getting a much better result. 
The second step in the sort of two-step process of recolouring this image is to use a gradient map to deal with the black and white. To do this, I'm first of all going to make a selection. So I'm going back to making visible or accessible the layer that has the flattened version of the pattern. I'm going back to my magic wand tool. I'm going to click once on the area that we selected last time. Now remember last time we expanded this selection by one pixel. We don't want to do that this time because we want some slight overlap in the selection. So I'm not going to expand this at all. I am, however, going to invert it. So I'll choose select and then inverse. So now what is selected is all the area that's not pink. I'm going to turn off this layer because I don't need it. I'm going to target the topmost layer, the hue saturation adjustment we just made so that I can add my gradient map on top of it layer new adjustment layer and then gradient map. I'll click OK. Now this happens to be defaulting to a white to black gradient. That's just fine because let me just close that down. Let's go in with the zoom tool and just see what's happening in here. You can see that by making my selection and not varying it, I've got very, very little bleed into this colored areas. And so where the white is meeting the pink, I don't have a lot of residual color. Now, if you did have too much residual color, this is what you're going to do. Let's just trash that layer for a minute. Let's go back and make this selection. This time you're going to bring this selection in by one pixel. So this is going to make the selection slightly smaller of the pink area. So when we invert the selection, the black area is going to be larger. So let's go select, modify, and this time we'll contract it by just one pixel. And then we'll invert it, select, inverse. It's just a way of finessing your selections by just one pixel to make sure that the overlaps are going to be invisible. So you're not getting sort of some fringing, if you like, around these recolored areas. Let's go back and retry that adjustment layer. And let's just zoom in. You can see now I've got even less bleeding. I think that's a really good selection. I probably wouldn't do anything more than that, but I have got a really neat edge where the pink and white, which was pink and black, are now intersecting. So the white is recoloring that black really nicely and I'm getting a really good result. So now we can go back to our gradient map and make the choices that we want for the black and the white areas. We're just going into the gradient and we're just going to either select a built-in gradient and edit it or you can create your own gradient from the settings here. I'm just going to pick one that's here just for ease. Now, of course, once I've created it by clicking on the gradient and selecting it, I can make changes to it. For neatness, I'm going to remove all these stops. Because what I only want really is the black and white areas because I've only got black and white in the underlying document. So I can choose different colors. I think I just might change this blue. Try and not make your eyes bleed in the process. So there's a way of applying a multicolor change to a pattern using not only a hue saturation adjustment layer, but also this gradient map layer. Now, the big disadvantage to this is that it's not live. This is not an effect that we can now change. So we couldn't come in, for example, and make a change to our pattern. We can't make our pattern any bigger or any smaller because these masks are just going to fall apart when you do that. You would have to rebuild your masks. So this is an imperfect solution. It's fine if you've already decided what you want your pattern to look like, the size and everything, and you just want to recolor it. But if you want a live effect, this is not really as good as it could be, but it is a way that does work. So I hope that this helps you understand some of your options when you're recoloring patterns here in Photoshop. Before we finish, I have more Photoshop training available at Skillshare.com. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare offer for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine is better. And you can feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. 
So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button so that we can get to 50,000 subscribers really, really quickly and click the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.